Hey, welcome back to Fox and Robin Recording. Uh, and today's a new video. We've got our coffee, so let's get at it. Um, first thing, updates. We've got a lot of things that we've updated. The desk is kind of back in its rack configuration here. We have added, you can see one behind me and there's one that's kind of over here and there's one that's over here, but they are um, the Bento 8 Pro uh, Friedenstein uh, 500 series racks. So we got quite a bit of 500 series stuff coming that we're going to be demoing and trying and and kind of figuring out what we like in that aspect. So that's kind of what you're seeing behind me here. We'll have one set up with EQ, one set up with compression. So that's, um, we already have them kind of set up that way, but we also have a patch bay that's going to, they're going to be all patched into so we can patch from the front really easy because all of their IO is on the back. Um, but yeah, in a nutshell, that's what's going on with the desk here. Um, the other thing is we've got a UF8 from SSL, as you can see here, and that's primarily what today's video is about. Today's video is about our UF8. Um, we've got it set up with Luna. Um, it works with a handful of DAWs, Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, Studio One, Reaper, I think is even in there. And I know Luna is definitely in there. Um, because we've got it hooked up with that and it's very simple. You just go into your uh, your settings, go to MIDI controller, and then you just say, I want uh, source one, you know, SSL one source in your input. And then your destination is the same thing. It's SSL one destination. And then you just hit activate and it snaps. It literally, I hit it and it snapped. It was kind of like, oh, this is really easy. Probably one of the more easiest yeah, probably the easiest controller I've ever set up for a DAW ever. Because usually you have to go through and hit MIDI and make sure that it it's talking. And then sometimes it doesn't want to talk. And, you know, you got to figure out. But with Luna so far, it was just like done. Plug in, plug in a USB, -C, USB cable, power, go into Luna, tell it what to see. And it was done. So... Kind of that in a nutshell it's really easy to set up they they do give you some con instructions on how to how to set it up how to plug it in but not really how to set it up in your daw so you do have to go online and find the actual user manual and tell the user manual that you want or basically walks you through in the user manual user manual how to connect your daw and it goes through each daw it supports which was really nice i just went and found the luna one followed the instructions plugged it in um so that's kind of that in a nutshell. Uh, I love it so far. Um, it's got eight faders. It's got eight LCD screens, eight pan knobs. Actually, they're rotary knobs. They do a couple different things. I have them set up as pan knobs right now, but you can change them to be cues. They can be sends. They can be whatever the heck you want them to be. Um, the LCD screen is kind of divided into thirds. So you got a little third at the top that tells you like, what your top keys because there are eight user keys across the top here that tell you different things and then there's another section below that the rotor tells you what the rotary knobs are doing and then the middle is like name of what's happening like channel name gain send one send two q ones whatever whatever you have it set up to be so um that's kind of what it is and then it's got six right here soft keys and those soft keys Basically, um, they do a slew of things. I've got them set up to play and record kind of my transport right now across the top here, but you can also set it up to be, there's a handful of things you can set these user keys to do. Um, you can have cues. I have one that does just cues. It's like, this is my cue one, this is my send one. That's all it does. I hit that and it goes to sends. Hey, this one, it goes to cues. It, it's great. Um, did have to kind of figure out how the layout out once you go to cues, because it doesn't just like, oh, here's, Here's your cue and it gives you a bunch of options. You kind of have to like go around it and kind of just read what's happening on the screen. Once you kind of read what's on the screen, you, you get an understanding of what's happening. Um, each channel has a solo cut and select function, which are awesome. Um, they are 100 millimeter faders. So you get a real nice, smooth, long travel. They're great. Um, I thought this would be a little big for this desk, but it fits perfectly. Um, it does come with feet so you can angle it up so you can see your LCDs a little better um, if you don't have it in an angled rack or something like that. I sat it flat on the desk and was like, oh, perfect, but perfect height, 
but it really wasn't because I couldn't see what the top row buttons were really saying or telling me because of the height of these encoder, middle encoder knobs. There is a channel knob, so you can actually use the channel knob, the rotary channel knob, so you can kind of go through and one channel at a time if you want, or you can do banks. It does banks of eight. Um, the cool thing is with these is you, they have a USB out, so you hook one USB into your computer, and then it has a USB through to where you can hook the other modules they make. Like you could hook up to four, of the UF8s and get 32 faders, or you can hook up a UFA and a UC1, which UC1's their center channel strip. Or you can set it up to where, if you had, um, I've seen some configurations where you have the UF8, the center section, and then at the end is the UC1, or the UF1, sorry. UC, so it was UF8, UC1, and UF1. It's kind of hard to say. But that was like kind of like a master fader at the end type thing that we might do. I don't know. It's something I'm playing with. But for now, we're just going to go with this guy, see how we like it, um, and kind of go on. There is a slew of other functions that it does that I could get into, but I'm not going to. Um, it has three layers here. A little layer button right here. Those layer buttons um, are very handy. I've got one set up for, a lot, for Luna, obviously. And I've got another one set up for Logic, for my, my clients that come in and use Logic. Um, you know, so they could just hit the two and it they open Logic, hit two, it snaps to Logic, done. And then when I go back to Luna, I just hit the number one, it goes back to Luna. It's fantastic. You can set up three DAW, three, I think, total DAWs that way, um, which is cool. You can set up like Pro Tools, Logic, Luna, or Luna, Logic, Studio One, whatever your, your thing is. You could set it up here. Um, there is a send and plug-in thing here, but the send and plug-in buttons don't work in Luna. I'm pretty sure they work in Logic. I haven't tested it because I haven't really set this up in Logic yet, but um, it does does not function. I had to read about it. I was kind of confused. Like, why aren't these working? When it had to read in their actual user manual when it talks about Luna, it actually tells you those keys. There's nothing that Luna has set up UA has set up for Luna for those keys yet. So I imagine in the future, they'll set up some keys that work with those. Um, and then you've got your automation, read, write, all that fun stuff for channels down below, which is kind of cool. Um, we'll probably use this for mixing and even automation. We might even do it for automation. I haven't played with automation yet. I've been kind of mixing with it. It's been great. Um, and then it's got uh, kind of a, a scrub type buttons down here and you can kind of go left and right in your session uh, you can ch channel up and down um, that's really they actually if you hold the channel button the channel encoder hold this guy here it'll put this little crosshair plus in the bottom there into a transport mode so you can hit record stop play all that fun stuff I I didn't like it so I just took it out I actually like it better across the top here um, I love it because there's a lot of things that you can customize and make it work for your personal workflow. Um, for us, it's gonna work as like a little mixer, kind of like it's gonna give me faders for the actual software mixing um, because most of our inputs and stuff are gonna be analog through the 500 series stuff, um, which I'm really excited to show you guys some of that when it gets here. But um, that's kind of the UF8 in a long, long run. It works over USB-C, so you can plug it in. It came with the USB-C cable. It came with the USB-C to USB-A cable. And it came with the obvious power because you'd have to have separate power to operate the faders um, and just power it on. Um, one thing is it does not have an off. Like there's no power button to turn it off. Like you just have to like turn your Furman off or whatever or unplug it, power strip, whatever you have it plugged into, you just turn that off and it powers it down. Um, but yeah, it's been a great, um, thing for so far i like the way it feels it does give me a very analog feeling when i'm mixing so i still feel like i'm on an analog desk with it i you know i can get four fate four fingers on eight faders and kind of push things around and um it does it makes me feel like it's an analog desk ssl did a great job taking their the construction of their analog desks and putting it into this guy because i do feel like the faders are the same i've worked on ssl desks actual analog ones 4000s 8000s 
I think there's an 8,000 out there. I can't remember. I've worked on so many that I can't remember anymore. Um, the newer AWS stuff, and it feels just like those. The faders feel the same. Actually, I think they might even feel a little better than the analog desks. I don't know if that's necessarily true. That's my own opinion. So take it for what it is. Um, but if I haven't said it, and I say it again, I highly recommend getting one of these. They're like $1,200, not, not terribly cheap, and that's without the rack ears. You can get the rack ears for them, and I think it goes up a little bit more. I think the rack ears are like 150 bucks for them or something like that. Um, but they go for about 1200 You can get the UF-1 if you want to try the UF-1. I think they're like $699. The UC-1 I think is like 900 bucks or something like that, or right around the same price as this guy. I can't remember. Um, but I highly recommend trying these out if you're looking for a controller for your, your studio. Like if you want... Like I know people that use a slew of other ones and I've tried a handful of ones. I've tried the one from SoftTube. I didn't like how the, the faders were smaller so you didn't get as much travel. Um, that and you had to run some weird software in the background. And I was like, I don't wanna run it in the background. This does have software that runs in the background but basically it's just to configure this. Um, that's really all it does. It just tells you that it's connected and you can then configure your buttons to do stuff. That's pretty much all it does. Um, but the other ones I tried, I tried the, the Personas one. That one was cool, but it just, it felt a little clunky. I didn't like the, how the buttons feel. I love how the buttons feel on this one. The soft buttons feel, they're not analog feeling. They like, you don't click, but they feel, they got some nice rigidity to them that I don't feel that the Personas ones had. Um, not that the Personas ones bad or anything. I just didn't like how it felt for me. Um, but this one, I think it's right close to the same price as the 16 channel one, or even, I don't even know what the little ones go for anymore from Personas. Um, there's a whole slew of other companies that make ones like this, but I feel like this one so far is the best um, feel um, for those who were like, hey, I want an analog feel to my, my controller. This is the best one I've found so far. Um, the buttons are quiet. So when you're recording with it, you hit a button, no one's gonna hear it, or you push a fader, no one's gonna hear it that in your recording. Um, so we've got it actually hooked to Luna right now as we're recording, you might be able to see, and maybe not, maybe so, I don't know, but I've, you can see the meters because it does show you input, shows you um, on the LCD screen, you're basically metering that's happening in Luna. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little heavy, it's great. Um, the feet are all metal. They've got little rubber feet that go on the feet risers. Um, it comes with rubber feet on it when you sit it flat. Um, it's just a great looking piece of gear too. Like it blends in with my desk really well with the analog stuff that I already have in the desk. So that's kind of my rant and review on this particular piece of unit. Um, we might come back in six months and be like, hey, six months in, do we love it? Do we not? We'll see. We've only had it for maybe a few days here. So anyways, um, thanks for liking and thanks for subscribing. And um, hit that bell if you want notifications from us when we post new videos. Um, and you know what? you got friends who you think might like this video. Send them a video. Send them a copy of it. Like, hey, share this with people um, that you might think uh, would like it or are like interested in this particular piece of gear or our other videos too. We got other videos you can go check out. So um, thanks for watching. And you know what? We'll see you next time. Cheers.